The first time I met with Dylan was back in February. It was a cold winter night here in Los Angeles. So let's be real, probably no lower than 50 degrees. I know, it's freezing. Oh my gosh, wait. <gasps> My little creation little studio area it is beautiful it's, yeah, it's like a, it's like one room and then i got a canopy bed because after a few too many glasses of wine yes i thought oh i'm gonna make like a second room in my studio and um it feels a little bit more like a little girl's room i but love hey, it it's, fun. it's just it's fun to um i feel like this space is like everything I always wanted as a kid. Yes. And now I finally get to like buy all the things I wanted when I was a toddler. I mean like these, even these clips in my hair, it's like, I feel like I'm actively going through like my toddler stage right now. I'm, and I'm obsessed with it. Thanks. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. It's so, so nice. Yes. So I, I put like little backdrop. I have a bunch of backdrops everywhere to make it look like I'm in like different spaces for my, my content. Yeah. You do and, like um, section it off. But yeah. Like, oh yeah. Okay. Like the wallpaper there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I have a bunch of stuff under the bed to, for content and costumes and it, I make it work. It's just me. Before this, I was touring with the Book of Mormon. Yes. Clearly I don't look like a Mormon anymore, but being being in the theater, being an artist, like it's kind of scary to like make roots. And, and especially I, I was so scared to not go back to New York because I was like, oh my God, is there going to be opportunity out here in LA for me? But I, I went to a psychic and she said, you got to move to West Hollywood. You need to live by yourself and you need to sign a lease. So it's going to be a year next month. And I want to keep living here for a lot longer. So I get to like the side better. Okay, good. <laughs> we had a beautiful conversation about where Dylan was at that time with their gender identity what being non-binary was like in the theater space, which can be a very binary-centered space, and how Dylan was handling all of it. After the interview, I went to see Dylan perform stand-up. I feel like I'm Alexi. Who do you think you are? Wait, Alexi's yeah. not Avatar, right? Yeah. Is that who you are? <laughs> I don't know. I, like, I probably am, unfortunately. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I like her, but like, she, she is. I feel like she's the theater kid. Yes. 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 And they were amazing. God, I hope there's you know no transphobic guys. I'm swiping. I'm like, do you look like you're gonna kill me? Swipe. Do you look like you're gonna kill me? Swipe. But before I had a chance to edit and upload the episode. Dylan had made some changes in her life. Day one of being a girl, day two of being a wolf, day three of being a girl, and I've already become a bimbo. It was absolutely beautiful to be a follower and watch her, day in and day out, share her journey of transitioning with her ever-growing audience. Every day, her new videos were getting millions of views and her follower count was skyrocketing. Day 51 of being a girl and I wrote you a thank you note. Yes, you, it's for you. I was gonna send it in the mail, but I didn't have your address. So I'm just gonna read it to you now. I knew that I needed to sit down with her again to get her most current perspective on everything. I wanted to know what this ever-changing journey has been like, how the rapidly growing influx of followers have changed and helped her career. And most of all, I wanted to thank Dylan for allowing us all to go on that journey with her as she learns what it is like to be a trans woman for herself. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. It's like deja vu. I know. Thank you for doing this again. Day 30 of my girl being a girl. Once you really start to take off like Dylan had been since she started this day one of being a girl series, I knew that she was probably slammed with opportunities and gigs, but she carved out time to meet with me again to get back into it all. Only this time, as a woman. Okay, well here we are again. Hi! I'm so excited Deja to see you again. I know. This is great. It's, I'm happy we're doing it. Me too. It was, it was necessary. This is round two, everyone. I just feel like so much has changed in your life in the past month. Well, when we last talked, I, I had voiced that I was feeling very feminine. I had started the hormones, but I was so scared to take on that term, trans woman. And that was sort of the last piece for me, was to say, Oh, Dylan, this really is who you are. It's almost as if my life has really now started and blossomed because I finally had the confidence to do that. Now I'm sharing that with the world and I am simultaneously transitioning while also going through all of these crazy life endeavors of career and relationships and all these things and, and it's, it's all happening at the same time and it's happening really fast. Thank so you. beautiful to watch you be so open with this audience that's growing so much as you're being open. Yeah, and I, I think what's been the most interesting part is the the types of people I'm connecting with. Most of all, I just, I want to make the trans community proud and I want to make sure that I'm doing them well, I'm showing the trans experience in a, in a nice light. And so to hear from other trans people that like, are they are inspired by me, I have people messaging that they're coming out because of me. And in that, was very touching. And then you, I have sort of this, these cis women, cis girls that are following along and messaging me like, you feel like my big sister, or I had never thought about being a woman in this way, or I never realized that 
we had to learn all these things growing up and now you're shedding light on them. Most of all, I, I also just want to be part of the sisterhood. I want to feel welcomed by that community. So it's been awesome. Was it a scary transition? More scary going from non-binary to trans than it was from going to cis male to non-binary? I don't know if I would have had the courage and the strength to, to leap from man to trans woman because that is such a scary height to kind of conquer. And so non-binary for me was this magical time to explore my gender, explore my femininity with while also still having the grace to figure things out. I still have that they pronoun, so I'm, I go by she and they, just because sometimes I do still feel a little bit non-binary. I do want to move towards this anti-binary sort of idea, but now that I am a girl, now that I'm a trans woman, I'm like, oh, Dylan, this feels really good. It's so interesting because when, last night I interviewed you, I, your TikToks were getting, what, on average, like 50,000 views? Yeah. And then the moment you did the day one of being a girl, it's been 7 million, 2 million, 5 million. Have you gotten any below a million views? I now make a video and it's it's like, is this the story you want to tell? Are you ready to share this? Is this something that should be heard by other people? I think what happens when people transition, you kind of automatically become this like activist spokesperson. You almost have to be because you are so bombarded by questions and needing to stand up for yourself. That's what scared me the most, I think, was to speak on transness on something like TikTok. I was like, oh my gosh, Dylan, like, you're not ready. You don't have all the answers. But the way that the series is formulated, this Days of Girlhood, is that we are all learning these things together. It's beautiful. And the way you educate people in such a light, funny, heartfelt, open, vulnerable way is just so t Do you have a favorite video that you've made? The tampon video went like super crazy viral. Day 12 of being a girl and I just picked up some tampons and y'all are probably thinking, Dylan, where are you gonna put those? They're not for me. But this last weekend, I was in the restroom and the girl in the stall next to me was like, hey, do you have a tampon? And I froze. I was like, sorry, no. But in that moment, I decided, you know what? I'm always going to have one on hand for anyone who needs it. How was you telling your parents that you're now transitioning fully? I come from a very conservative family, but I've come out to them so many times now that it was kind of like, they were like, here's another, another one, another one. Yes, here's another one. Yes. And uh, ultimately, what I was so proud of myself for was it was not me asking permission. It was me telling them. I think what's crazy for them is to now see the world accepting me as a woman. And so my family is, sort of has no choice. And it, it's also really funny too, because you know, being from such a conservative family, I don't think they ever expected to have one of their most successful family members be a trans woman. And that's something that you know, they're gonna have to accept too, is that like I now carry the Mulvaney name and I am who I am. And that's, this is part of my story. So it is really, it's been wild with them. Day 45 of being a girl, and we are talking about the haters. Have you had a hard time dealing with the hate from TikTok? Less of um, TikTok and more of um, just external sources, news media, and the conservative world starting to highlight my videos. Ooh. Um, like a, a very prominent podcaster did an entire episode on me and talking about my, uh, my journey in a very terrible light. What were they saying? Um, essentially that I just need to be a masculine man and that, or no, a, a feminine man, man. She, she was a woman, which I think made it harder. You know, she didn't want me a part of the, the community of women. Oh my gosh. And, uh, so that, but it was then the comments that I read. And I think when you have such a large platform, like a large podcaster like that, I think you have to be aware of just because you don't wish ill on the subject you're speaking about, a lot of your followers do. So I'm now getting flooded with hate from that person's, you know, podcast about me. I'm the first one to say, I'm so fragile, I get really hurt by some of these things. But, and that's why I think I've seen so many trans women have to be so strong and so steady and and co overly confident because it's almost like we don't have a choice because if we do show weakness, if we show those vulnerabilities, it just gives the haters almost more power to see, you know, see us down. The bottom line is all of us trans folks, we're just trying to be happy. We are just trying to 
find the courage to wake up every single day to be the people that we want to be. And we don't need anyone else making that harder on us because it's already hard enough on ourselves. But there will be a moment, and I don't know if it's a year from now or 10 years or 50, I hope that we're alive to see it, where it is just so broadly accepted and, you know, the labels start to fly out the window and people are just kind. Even as a queer person, it's just it's just amazing to see someone just living authentically themselves. And it's just well, being and proud that's about so it. important is that there are still I especially think in the gay community, which can be toxic at times. I think of the bodybuilder type, you know, down, you know, partying yes, at yeah, the bars. Yeah. And not that that's a bad thing at all. I, I have lots of lovely friends like that, but those are also the people that we need on our side. And I remember I had just started hormones. I was at this sort of function with a lot of gay men who were very gorgeous looking and one of them was like, uh, I, I said that my pronouns were they, them, and they're like, so does that mean you're growing boobs now? And I was like, oh my god, you're lucky it was me that you're talking to because some people might be really offended by that. But I think the best thing that can happen is sort of as the queer community, we just stand by each other and we, we don't question each other's identities, we just lift each other up and we figure out how to just not only coexist but to, to love each other. There is a little bit of a separation between the gay community and the trans community and I, I mean, obviously I- Oh, this is interesting. And I, I just never, I never felt that because I feel like we're all part of the same community. Well, I think a lot of trans women are often not wanting to be seen as gay men um, because a lot of us did identify as gay men in the past and so there is that feeling of, you know, oh, I don't want to be grouped with that anymore. I think there is just like a little speed bump we have to get over where it, we can kind of come together. And gay guys need to, like, I can't believe someone would say that to you, you know? Yeah, and it's it's also, it's interesting on the relationship aspect of things of like, oh, am I, am I now attracting straight men? Or are, gay, are there still some gay men that are attracted to me? And it's sort of become this like mishmash. And I think sexuality in general, like, is starting to really evolve from just this idea of straight, bi, gay. Once people start exploring their sexualities, how that also connects us in gender and in transness. In the gay community, we have to get over this idea of that like masculinity is what's hot. It limits so many of us and I think as a femme gay man growing up, I felt unattractive. I felt sort of like I put those clothes on to look a, you know, look that certain way. And I wish that I had never done that to myself. Every variation is beautiful. That's definitely what my series is about too, because I feel like the gay community is looked at as like, you know, you have to be buff or six yes, pack to be and, like and attractive. you're showing all of these different kinds of people. And that's what I'm excited about. Because even on television, when you think about the past like 20 years of, of gay characters, they're usually wildly attractive, they're usually white, they're, you know, you've got this sort of standard of beauty. And not that that's bad, it's it's just that we need way more diversity, we way, need way more shades of what the community really looks like. Day 38 of being a girl, and these are the things that I wish I could tell my younger self. One day, you won't feel like a freak. Your twilight obsession does not go away. You never belonged in the boys' locker room, and you knew it and I'm sorry that you had to endure what you did. You are allergic to tequila, and even though you really love frozen margaritas, it's just never gonna be worth it. If he is ashamed of talking to you in public, he has no right to your vulnerability in private. How has your career been affected by this growth in your TikTok and your fan base? I've been presented a lot of different kinds of opportunities. It is now wild to have to sift through all of these amazing opportunities and say, Dylan, what is what do you want the future to look like? I kind of turned down a reality opportunity just because I, I wanted to make sure that I get to be the person that sh sort of shows my my light and my story versus having somebody else have the power of my story. So my plan is right now, I'm gonna go to day 100, I'm gonna try to make a video every day. If I don't, that's okay, but uh, I would love to get there and then start making some other kinds of content, in including the days of girlhood, and just see sort of what opportunities pop up. Your journey is just inspiring and I'm just so grateful to have you part of my life. Oh my god, no, I, this is, I, I see 
so much of what we're doing is actually very similar because yeah. I think even with what your your show is right now, it's it's highlighting these experiences of queer people in entertaining ways, but also very heartfelt. And that's, to me, some of the best version of activism mm -hmm. because people want to, when they're scrolling on TikTok or watching a YouTube video, they often want to feel relaxed. That's their time off. That's their time away from work to sort of escape from the darkness or from the stress. And so to be able to still teach somebody something while also having a good time I think is the key to like successful media. Period. Thank you so much for doing of this, course. taking the time out. You're a jam packed these days. Well, and I'm so glad that we got to do this because th now that we have all of this, it will really um, bring the story kind of together. And hopefully, in five months from now, we'll do a follow up and a lot of love. Yes, and, and you'll be on a, a network and there. it'll be magic. Put that out in the world. I love that. Manifestation. Thank you. Yes, we love it. Thank you so much. Of course. Yes.